Derek, congrats on the uh, the victory. How good does it feel to, to be on that first uh, round of the tournament? It feels great. Um, I, I mean, I implemented my game plan coming out tonight, and to, I told myself that I wanted to get to the next round and ultimately keep going in this uh, this tournament and uh, mission accomplished tonight. He's definitely a dangerous fighter. What was the game plan for him coming in? Well, I wanted to keep it uh, straight down the middle. You know, that's what uh, a couple of my coaches were. They just said straight down the middle with the punches. And uh, I was going to try and light him up with some kicks, do some combos, you know, bring something new to the table. And uh, after that first exchange, that first sequence, uh, just jumped right on top of him and, and ch the whole game plan changed. Just out wrestle him, smother him, try to grind him, ground and pound him. And uh, I tried to get that submission, but uh, he's relentless. And he, he told me himself, he's like, you, gonna, you may beat me, but you ain't going to finish me. <laughs> You, um, you being, I guess, the bigger guy, and but like, he's also a former champion. Uh, did he feel as strong to you as expected? Um, no, no, he didn't. He didn't feel like super strong at all. I mean, he felt strong, but he didn't feel like a typical 155 or or a couple 170 or 170 pounders that I roll with sometimes. Uh, I definitely felt like I had the strength advantage uh, in that grappling match. I mean, the, the scoreboard shows that um, there was a really one-sided performance, a couple of 30-25s on there. But were you frustrated that um, that you weren't able to put him away? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, those arm triangles, I tried to set up a couple of Kimuras, um, and uh, and key locks and just, I mean, I tried I tried as hard as I could for the arm triangles. And um, um, unfortunately, I, I couldn't get it, you know, all the, the Daniel's dreads, man. Those must have given him some cushion or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but he was relentless. There's a reason he's a former champ, and he ain't going down without a fight. And uh, I just tried to make it play out the way I wanted it to play, and, and, I, and I did. I sent a message to everybody else in this uh, tournament that if I want to impose my will on you, it's going to happen. Now for the next round, they'll have kind of a unique thing with the blind draw to determine, uh, you know, kind of let fighters pick their shots. If you have an opportunity, would you pick a title shot next? Oh, absolutely. I mean, who wouldn't want a title shot next? But, um, you know, it's all about strategy. It's all about uh, the game planning and, and figuring out who you're going to, who you want to take on next. And at the end of the night, you know, end goal is become the champion. So if the next fight is means fighting for the championship, become the champion, that means holding on to that belt and, and staying the champ. There's, there's an intensity this week that I've seen that I haven't seen from you, especially in media day. You were really locked in. You looked intense. And in the cage, you were absolutely on fire. I mean, you, you were really, really going for it for the finish. Did something change during during this, this fight camp for you to really bring out that intensity? Yeah, I mean, I just had to wake up. Um, you know, last fight, Carvalho whooped my ass. And... Um, uh, you know, I just, I just had to, I just had to wake up, man. And for me, it was do or die. Uh, this is a chopping block. And you know, honestly, if I would have lost this fight, I would have just retired. You know, I would, I would hung it up. But I told myself that I didn't want it to be over. I love this. I love the fight game. I love being a part of it. It's my life. I chose this life uh, back in 2007, June of 2007. I said, you know what? This is the journey for me. And uh, and here I am, and the journey continues, and I only want to get better and uh, and get that belt. Did, did you tell anybody else about that decision that was uh, that you were going to walk away if you if you got a loss, or is that just something you internalized? That, that's just something I internalized. I mean, I told myself, you're either going to show up tonight, you're going to be hungry, you're going to want it. I knew as soon as I got in that cage, I, I knew where my heart was going to be. And as soon as, as soon as I was in that cage and I locked up my eyes on Daniel Strauss, I was like, I'm here. I'm here to stay. Last one for me. I don't know if it was the, the first exchange or the first a, a kick attempt that he tried when he fell back, landed a little funny, and looked like, I don't know if it was his shoulder or if it happened later on. When did you notice that something was off, and, and what does that do to you? Did that change the game plan when, when you noticed that? Absolutely. After that first exchange, um, when he threw that kick and he fell to the ground, um, I knew something was off. I couldn't tell exactly what it was, but I just jumped on him. I immediately went to I mean, I was going to try and finish him. I thought I would catch him. But, um, yeah, just the whole game plan changed. I mean, I, I honed in on him, just pounced on him, stayed on top of him, stayed top heavy. And no, I knew I could out-wrestle him. I knew I could impose my will. 
and uh, it just the whole fight changed from there. And then I heard my coach and just listened to him from there on out. But honestly, I would have loved to give it old fashioned Campo scrap, but uh, you know, got to fight smart in this tournament. I mean, at the end of the day, that's money, on, that's bread on the table for my family, and uh, got to fight smart. You know, I'll be honest, I'm getting older and I only have so many more scraps in me before you know I'm talking all punch drunk and stuff. So you know, I'd like to be able to hold my kids and play with them and not be sounding you know like hey. Speaking of scrapping, you implemented your game plan so well and took pretty much no damage. So what was the top process behind the last 30 seconds or so? Um, honestly, I thought there was a minute and 30 to go. Uh, my whole thought process was, man, this is Daniel Strauss, former champ. The people were kind of booing, and I was like, you know what, let's – Let's give him something to, to go out with. And uh, honestly, I, I had more respect. I had that's how much respect I had for Daniel. I was like, man, let's get up and, and finish this. Let's throw some hands. Because I knew he was a scrapper at heart. And I was, and so got my ass up, and I was like, let's do this. I mean, let's try to, I was going to try to knock his ass out. And, but it played out the way it did. And uh, next time, you know, next time I'll uh, bring a little bit more of my hands to the game and uh, mix it up.